Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here. We're back doing a Guilds of Ravnica Intermediate Swiss Draft League. Well, we've got uh, Glaive of the Guild Pact. Yeah, I probably won't first pick that. Look, probably just looking at dead weight, cheap removal. Can be quite difficult to deal with some of the aggressive decks in the format. So dead weight is always nice to have, regardless of whether you're playing against aggro or mid range. Not a ton of exciting picks in here anyway. Wojek Bodyguard, Rosemane Centaur, Muse Drake, Hellkite Whelp. The rare is playable, not super exciting. We'll just take a dead weight. Be okay with it. Maybe we'll even wheel the Glaive of the Guild Pact. I don't think that everybody's into that card anyway, so. Okay, here we have Darkblade Agent, Hired Poisoner. Gatekeeper Gargoyle. Uh, yeah, best cards in the pack. Probably the Centaur, the Agent, or the Poisoner, I would I would think. I'm okay taking an Agent here if it works out great. If not, that's okay. But it's a powerful ability if you have enough Surveil in your deck. Death Touch or draw a card or both, I mean, pretty nice. Okay, I'll take it over the Poisoner. See if it works. All right. Snitch is pretty good one. There's a Notion Rain in here, too, which is very good. But uh, I feel like I would rather have the payoffs than the enablers. But Notion Rain is very good. They're both very good. I don't think either will wheel. They both kind of pretty much pass the... Uh, Demir deck signal, sort of, you know? Someone's going to take it and want to go into Demir, whether it be Notion Rain or Snitch. They're both clear Demir cards. Clear Demir. I think we'll just take the Snitch. It's uncommon. I presume we'll see less of it. It works really well in conjunction with Notion Rain. Only having to take the one damage and being able to drain them is quite strong, but I'm going to take the Snitch. Okay. Adept is definitely at home in a deck like this. Much better in Demir than it is in Is It. We also have Barrier of Bones, which surveils. Gives us a little payoff there, but I think we'll go Adept. Demir tends to go a little bit more late game, and Adept is pretty amazing in that position. Otherwise, Silent Dart probably more playable in Demir than elsewhere. Other picks in here that are notable, nothing really. We'll take the Adept. All right, fairly unexciting pack here. We can take the Dowser of Lights or we can take the Guildgate. I'm okay taking Guildgate. Dowser of Lights is certainly playable, but um, you can never really have enough gates, especially if you end up with gate payoffs, like the Gatekeeper or the Glaive that we passed. And uh, I tend to almost always end up cutting cards, so taking Guild Gates over playable cards like Dowser seems completely fine to me. We're up to a fifth pick Hellkite Whelp. That's not necessarily a sign. Smell Ward Minotaur is very good for Is It, and the rest is sort of just whatever card. So, all right, we'll take the Guild Gate. Can also end up playing Bug. No big deal. So here we have Muse Drake, Demir Guildgate, Severed Strands. Severed Strands, much more of a Golgari card, but certainly playable here. Muse Drake is pretty much always good. I can't think of a lot of decks where I wouldn't play a Muse Drake. I like drawing cards, I like getting a flyer. And it's a blocker. It does a lot of what you want it to do. Otherwise, I mean, the fact that it blocks Sky Knight Legionnaire, draws you a card, can ping your opponent down certain spots, just a good value card. I think we'll take it over the Guild Gate here. We're up to a 6-pick Bodyguard. That could be starting to get to a sign that that's something we could do. All right, here we're definitely taking the Demir Guild Gate over a Wall of Mist and a Maximize Altitude. The Vigor Spore Worm in here, which is quite good, actually. I, you know, honestly, there's probably a reasonable argument that you could splash for Vigor Spore Worm, but we'll just take the Guild Gate. 
and be happy. Okay. Dazzling Lights, good synergy with what we're doing. Certainly a good card. Taking it over Disdainful Stroke and Never Happen, both of which would also be good, but we'll take the Surveil card. Here, not much, to be honest. I think we could take the Never Happened for sideboard. Or we could take the Invert for sideboard. Let's take Never Happened. There's some bomby cards I'd like to have some protection against out of sideboard. Alright, Centipede is a pretty playable card. There's also a Is It Guildgate in here, but I actually think there's a good chance Spinal Centipede makes the deck. I've been very impressed with this card in the format. Very playable in Golgari and Demir, and typically is a problem for the opponent if you have multiple creatures out. Okay, Muse Drake number two, I'm going to take over Radical Idea. It does occupy the four drop slot, which typically gets gunked up, but it's a good four drop. It surprisingly is worth the four mana. All right, got the Barrier of Bones back. That's actually nice. I think it makes the deck pretty easily. It's something we can, if we end up picking up Severed Strands at some point, it's something I'm happy to experiment with. Note that we did not wield the Glaive of the Guild Pact, which I find interesting. And we'll take the worst card here, which is probably the pause. I guess. Actually, we're going to take the Torch Courier to let our people know, hey, you can take either of those colors. Here, we're just going to cut the black card. And last pick, pretty unplayable green card, but that's all right. I like the start that we have. Okay, here we can take Artful Takedown. There's Deadly Visit. There's another Dark Blade Agent. I think here we're taking a removal. Possibly Wheel the Creeping Chill, which if we end up with enough Surveil, I can consider, but I'm not really blown away by that card. I think we'll take Artful Takedown over Deadly Visit. Actually, let me think about that. We have Surveil Payoffs. Agent and Snitch. But this is instant speed, does a little bit more. This is sorcery, deals with anything, and has surveil. Huh. They're both commons. They're both good. I feel like cheaper is typically better, but we're going to want to really have as many surveil cards as we possibly can if we're going to be in Demir. I mean, Demir is about surveil synergies. So it might be that Deadly Visit makes more sense. I'm not sure on that. I feel like, our, like I said, Artful Takedown, the cheaper cost is a big deal, but Surveil is also a big deal. My gut says I'm going to want a lot of Surveil. I don't know if this is right since it's more expensive, like I said, but we'll find out. Steam Vents, Guildgate, Enhanced Surveillance, Cyclops, Drake number three. All right, so current cards that work with Cyclops. Just Deadly Visit, Dazzling Lights. Not even the dead weight. Not really feeling that. Surveillance is a whatever card. We can check the price on Steam Vents. I highly doubt it's worth much of anything. Oh, it's worth two tickets. Ah, you know what? I'm just going to take two tickets. I, I don't care enough about any of these cards. Even a third Muse Drake I'm really not blown away by. And who knows? Maybe there's even a red card we'll end up splashing for. So here we can take the Poisoner as another Centipede. We have Chromatic Lantern, though we don't really need the Lantern. Um, I'm kind of tempted to take the Poisoner. I just love Poisoner in general. It's always nice to have low-curve cards like Poisoner. And honestly, it just it does a lot. It blocks pretty much everything, and it attacks into a lot of things, too. It's just a nice card to have. Great way to get to the late game which is really what Demir needs most of the time. So I'm going to take the Poisoner here. Watery Grave, huh? There's a Sinister Sabotage, too. Sinister Sabotage has less synergy with the Agent, since you presumably played on your opponent's turn, but it does have some very good Snitch synergy. We'll check the price on the Watery Grave, too, since that one easily makes the deck and is quite good. That one's only worth 91 cents. For that reason, I might just take the Sabotage, because I think it will make the deck... And it's nice to have some more Surveil. So at this point, we only have the two payoffs. Which means, I'm glad I prioritized those highly, but we're going to need some more payoffs. Or else, we're not really maximizing the uh, synergy of this style of deck. So we do have Golgari Guildgate to splash a Rhizome Lurcher. I'm not really blown away by that plan. We could take the Lotleth Giant. It's a big finisher. 
not really blown away by it either, but it might be Lot Left Giant here. I'm a little more excited about that than I am about splashing a Rhizome Lurcher. Both are fairly underwhelming. Child of Night, kind of a whatever card in this in this uh, format I've found, but it is cheap and it can trade. It's pretty good with Passwall Adept. Otherwise, we're taking another Golgari Guildgate for potential splash or a Selective Snare, which is kind of whatever card too, at least a sideboard card. I'll take the Child of Night. I think for now it has a decent chance to make the deck. Uh, I guess we can take the Surveillance. I don't really like the Bats all that much. I would say, once again, more of a Golgari card, since you don't care if it dies, and I feel like, I don't know. It's it's fine. It's playable. I'm just not excited about it. I'm not excited about Enhanced Surveillance either, quite frankly, but nothing else in here is going to make the deck, so we'll consider it for now, but that's a late Bounty of Might. That's surprising. We'll take the Mesmerist here. A chance to make the deck. Not super likely, though. Uh, did get the Creeping Chill. I'd probably just take the Guildgate, though. Never excited by Creeping Chill. Never happened. Once again, we'll take a sideboard card here. Uh, Veiled Shade playable. Not great. This pack did not go great for us. We'll take the worst card here, which is maybe like a locket. Probably a locket. Not really likely to splash an uprising, but I guess we'll take it. Take a green card. It's the only color we're possibly splashing. So we might be in some trouble here. Pack 2 was not a big help for us. And uh, our deck needs to really come together here nicely in Pack 3, or we might be in some some trouble here. Well, last pick on color card. Which is good, typically, but considering how mediocre that pack was in terms of deck building, I mean, we got zero payoffs. I don't count the enhanced surveillance as a payoff. So, in a little bit of trouble there. We can take the gargoyle. It's a big finisher. We have four gates currently. can take the burglar rat. More of a Golgari card. Certainly playable. Swarm Guild Mage, not worth the splash. Ah, we might take the big flyer. I'm looking for something big to finish since we are very much lacking that. So we'll take the Gargoyle. Let's see. Deadly Visit number two, probably what we're looking for. I'm not going to... Well, I could play the Capture Sphere, but we want some more Surveil. And... Uh, not going to splash a League Guild Mage, although I honestly I, I would say I'm more likely to splash a League Guild Mage than a, a Swarm Guild Mage. But we'll take the Deadly Visit. Good for the deck. Whisper Agent, Watcher in the Mist. Both good. We're going to take the Watcher. They both surveil, but Watcher better finisher than a Whisper Agent. I'd, li I'd love to have both, but that's not going to happen, it looks like. Night Veil Predator. Well... I mean, this is our pack. House Guild Mage, Whisper Agent. We're taking the Predator, clearly. It's without a doubt the strongest card. It's without a doubt the strongest card in our deck now. So our deck just got exponentially better with this pick alone. Um, so that is good. Possible Splash of Hypothesis, not likely. Mephitic Vapors, a sideboard card. I think we probably take the Vapors. You can possibly main deck it, but it's nice to have out of sideboard, and I don't think that we're going to splash Hypothesis, although that is a something that we could do. Uh, Alright, so there's Snitch number two. Thankfully, it's exactly what our deck wants, because I think at this point we have a good amount of Surveil. We've, we've got the, the Dazzling Lights, we've got the Barrier, we've got Sabotage, that's three... Four, five, six. Six is okay. It's not great. It's okay, though. And Snitch is a welcome card to our deck. The Gatekeeper is not good enough in what we with what we've got right now, though. So, all right, Demir Informant, taking it. Over Radical Idea, over the Bats. 
And at this point, I think the gargoyle is just not going to get there. And we're probably not going to do Steam Vince or the Golgari Guildgate either. But this is fine pickup. Could take another Mesmerist. It's not great, but there's nothing else here that we need. So we'll take it. Uh, could splash the bigger spore worm. I really don't love it. I don't love it. It is something that we could do with like fly over top of the muse drake or uh, it's just a good card on its own, but I don't like splashing it here. I don't really like playing mausoleum secrets. We do have an okay toolkit, but not a great one. Like getting to five creatures in the yard seems difficult. I'll consider the bigger spore worm splash if we really. I think it's unlikely, though. Okay. Is it Guildgate? There's nothing else here. Guild Summit. Just not enough gates. Splash a Hellkite Whelp. Consider it. Not likely either. Okay. Can take the radical idea. And probably cut the enhanced surveillance, which is whatever anyway. Another bigger spore worm. So the question becomes, do we have enough ways to win or do we need to splash something like there's bigger spore worm? Uh, I really, I, I don't love the fact that we're playing Mesmeris. We don't really have a great, we don't have a great late game plan. We have a Predator, a Watcher, and a Lotless Giant that we're planning to win with. That's that's honestly not a lot. I don't think we're going to eke out victories on the back of Snitches. Uh, but splashing for Vigor Spore Worms with one Golgari Guildgate, I'm not in love with that either. So my big issue with this deck is lack of... Uh, lack of good finishers. I don't like playing... Paying six mana for even a even a four four flyer for six mana is not a not a great deal, but it may allow us to not tarnish our mana base if I do play Gatekeeper Gargoyle. Main deck Mephitic Vapors is not really doing it for me either. Weakest card in our deck cards in our deck, I should say, currently. You can theoretically finish with a Veiled Shade, so it probably is good enough for the deck here. The Mesmeris are, I I would say, by far the weakest cards in our deck. They're okay for our curve, but they're not really doing what I want. I think what we're going to do is swap one of these for a Gargoyle. But then, are we playing more tap lands just so that we can play a Gargoyle a little more effectively. I don't love that either. Almost at that point, I would rather splash for a bigger spore worm, and that way not have to run the Is It Guildgate. Would we need at least one forest? I would say yes, we would. Hmm. In theory, we could cut the other Mesmeris and run two worms up our green count. We're not extremely color intensive, but Predator sure is. And I guess, well, we're more color intensive than I like. How many how many green sources do I run for Vigor Spore Worm? I would say at least four, which means we probably run a Guildgate and three forests. Seems a bit excessive, but... Like I said, I, I, I'm not really feeling like Mesmeris are, are what our deck wants. However, Vigor Spore Worm on the back of a Pass Wall Adept in the mid to late game, I can I can absolutely see that winning. I can always swap into Mesmeris if we're playing against Aggro. Same with like Mephitic Vapors. Yeah, it could be what I need to do. Hmm. I'm not in love with it. I am not in love with it, but... I think it's what we're going to do. So we'll run the three forests. And if we do this, that is eight black, 
7 blue, 4 green. Hmm. Yeah. It's not a great mana base. But we're just really lacking in the uh, finisher department. I feel like without the help of these Vigor Spore Worms, we're just not... We're just not building towards any sort of plan that gets there late. But Vigor Spore Worm is legitimately very powerful. Pretty much at any point in the game. Certainly late game. Okay. Well, I think this is what we're doing. Did not quite end as good as I would like. Oh, I suppose we need a <laughs> we need one more land. Well that's probably helpful actually. Uh so we have our four green, we've got Three, four, five, six, seven, eight black, and what was it? Seven blue. So maybe we can do one more blue as well. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do our one more blue mana. That way we're eight, eight. Okay. That, that's actually quite a bit better. But yeah, I think we're color intensive enough where we're going to be running into some. We're going to be running into some uh, color issues. I feel like, but. The way I look at it, if I were to play a more streamlined mana base deck, we're going to really be lacking in the ways to win department, ways to effectively win. So Vigor Spore Worm is just a big helper in that regard. Okay. All right, here you have it. We'll see you round one. Round one, we're on the play. Our opponent doesn't want to play first. I think we... Probably Mulligan. I can play the Barrier of Bones and Surveil to dig for the land, but I want something a little bit safer than this. <laughs> this isn't super safe either, but it does give us two colors and... Hmm. Going to five on the play. I think we'll risk this one and hope we can... Oof. Well, at least I got rid of that. And hope that we can find some land here. Okay, that was necessary. All right. Huge pickup there. Now we can play the Dark Blade Agent. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's going to spell some trouble. Let's, uh... We probably dumped the deadly visit. Well, it's our one surveil card in hand. Probably the Drake, then, I guess. Hmm. All right, well, let's get in there. No blocks. Well, that's good news for us, but I'm confused for sure. I guess they're both humans. Okay. All right. Let's go, Agent. And next turn, we can go Adept and Dazzling Lights. Not bad. I 
I don't know if we have a good plan against the disinformation campaign. Last time I tried to be on the draw against a disinformation campaign, it didn't work so well for me, but I mean, I guess I don't know. Either way, it's pretty challenging. It's a challenging card to beat for what we're trying to do. Theoretically, we could go for a more beatdown plan. Six cards in hand, four open mana. I don't know how I feel about that. Okay, well, it's actually pretty good for us. I mean, granted, they're going to get their campaign back, but this does surprisingly work well for us. We're going to be able to Dazzling Lights and, and get some value there, because I assume they're just going to block the, the Snitch. And if they do, we Dazzling Lights it, and we get to kill their Wall of Mist. So this actually worked out okay. We don't lose our guy. We want the lands. Maybe not both. Okay, we can ditch a forest and keep the swamp. That puts us at deadly visit range, which is probably what we want. We do get to kill their wall of mist. We don't get to kill the whisper agent, but we don't lose our snitch, so that's good. Let's kill their thing. Oh, well, I guess they got us there. So, got to take a trade, and we'll follow up with an Adept. And then they're going to campaign us, and I guess we ditch the Drake so that we can deadly visit the Agent, Surveil, get in. Well, I'm glad they're attacking. Well, I mean, I guess it'd be better if they weren't attacking, but... Because we have to play the Deadly Visit regardless. But let's uh, at least run out of cards to discard here. And I guess we still have our late game cards to play. I guess we can attack first here. And then we'll... Do a deadly visit. We don't have to, but I don't want to end up losing it. And Okay, well, huh. I mean, in theory, we could keep both. My thinking is we need at least six mana to get to our uh, worms. We need seven to get to our giant, which could actually win us the game. So I think we keep both on top. We probably don't draw a visit next turn. We draw the gate. That gives them, I suppose, a couple turns to play a threat that we can try and deal with. And if we surveil again... That could be helpful. I kind of wish this gate was an untapped land. I think it ultimately would be more helpful to us. Piston Fist Cyclops. Okay. So, we just make it on. We play our gate. We go unblockable and get in there. So we're at uh, Worm Mana, and Worm currently boosts pretty well. Plus three, plus three, and we have a six, four. Opponent is surprisingly lacking mana, which is actually scary, because that means they have seven spells in hand, which is a lot. Okay, so they can go infinite with the uh, the campaign. That's something to be concerned about. 
So our plan is to attempt to kill the Cyclops, but they do have disdainful stroke mana up. I think we're just going to have to do it anyway. All right, they didn't have the disdainful stroke. We can barrier of bones. I guess I don't have an issue with that, although might make, well, we get a drain effect out of the barrier of bones, but then we can't make both of our guys unblockable. Uh, I guess it does the same thing, but we net a 0-3. But if we put it in our graveyard, um, our worm does get better. So does our giant. Although, admittedly, we currently can't play the giant. I think we probably ditch the barrier of bones. We're looking for threats pretty quick here. We're going to get in there. Really no reason for them to... I'm surprised they didn't block. Yeah, this is a this is a tough this is a tough choice game too about being on the play. If I'm on the play, I'll have an easier time countering the disinformation campaign. But if I'm on the draw, the extra card is a really big deal in a war of attrition like this. So it basically it comes down to what can I do about the <laughs> disinformation campaign? I need a I need a good means to beat the campaign. And currently don't have it. I was going to say, not attacking. That seems strange. Okay. Honestly, land at least puts us at giant territory. So they have to uh, kill our guys. And um, if they do, Giant is getting closer to lethal now. How many creatures do we have in our yard? We've got one, two, three, four. So they are close. Not quite there yet. Looks like they uh, splash. They're splashing a green card as well. Interestingly, okay. Doesn't kill our adept, which is actually nice. Okay, it's actually nice too. Well. Let's get in with the snitch first. And we'll attempt to play the watcher. Okay. They successfully counter our thing. And we pass. So if I take five here, that brings us to eight. So I may uh, probably want to keep the, ad the Adept around one more turn here. So I'm not going to block yet. I may need it. We'll find out. Okay. Dowser. All right. So... Four cards left in their hand. Um, I think our best odds of winning are three, four, and they're at six. So our best odds of winning would be the lot left giant. So instead of attacking, I think I'm just... I 
think I'm just hanging back here. So I blocked the Guild Mage and the Dowser. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess we'll just block here. This does put us dead unless I draw Surveil or a giant. Well, well, bigger spore worms, nice. If I had another mana. Could have gone uh, worm. Hmm. Yeah, it could have gone worm uh, plus adept. Well, it wouldn't have been lethal because it would have been one shy because it was a neg one. So, uh, if they attack, I think we just chump with the snitch, because then we once again have an out with the giant. So we just chump here. We we are at lethal with Lotlet Giant. We we have an actual means to do this here. They're going to play the campaign to make us discard, but we can win the game here. We legitimately can win. All right. Did not get there. I think we'll just hang back. Not going to play the Poisoner to make them think I've got, like, a, I don't know, artful takedown. Maybe we can just find some more information from our opponent. Doesn't look like it. Okay. So now the tough choice. Do I play first or second? It's, it's, believe me, it's, it's a very challenging choice. We're going to go with the never happens. Do I go more beat down is another question. I, I can do that. We could possibly cut the barrier, cut radical idea, cut mm. maybe if I can go more beat down, I, I want to. That'll at least allow me to be on the play. So I can play a never happened before they do, or I can leave up a sinister sabotage before they so maybe I really want two never happens. But then I have to find two cuts. Which is more challenging than it looks. Maybe the informant. It does lose us some surveil, but I'm probably okay with that. And I want to keep all of these creatures. Maybe we cut a mesmerist. 
Okay. I think I'm going to have to try and be on the play here. I feel like our one shot of beating this information campaign is being able to play either hand disruption or counterspell before they uh, can do something about it. I don't think we can keep this hand. It's a little too dangerous. This one will keep. It's actually pretty good. Oh, perfect. Okay. Very good. So we have our counter for the disinformation campaign, which is a very big deal since that card single-handedly beat us last game. Okay, so leaving up the Sinister Sabotage, and if they play the campaign, I'm, I'm feeling good. Despite the mulligan, I'm still feeling good. If we can stop that disinformation campaign, it's a big deal. Notion Rain, I think we're going to let that one resolve. They lose some life, which is good for us. We can leave up the counter. They do get to surveil four, but I think it's in our best interest to really just save this for the thing that will immediately win them the game. Well, not immediately win them the game, but win them the game in the long term, which I think is still the disinformation campaign and not the notion rain. The discard plus draw effect is just too powerful. Okay. I mean, if I have to counter something else, I will, but I'm hoping to counter the disinformation campaign. Maybe, honestly, there's a good chance I find something better to counter maybe this turn. We'll, we'll see. Burglar Rat. Well, <laughs> that's surprisingly good. <laughs> I don't want to counter it, but I think here we go. It's honestly, it's not the card I wanted to counter. We're going to graveyard that. Main reason being, I, I really want to land so that I can play the Watcher. All right. I don't think we're deadly visiting, so let's just. Uh, Get in and drop the watcher. Um, if they have the disinformation campaign, the Lotlet Giant hurts us, but hmm. It's a nice card to have if they don't, but I am two lands away from it. I, I think we'll keep it anyway. I don't really like the idea of graveyarding it. And I guess even if they have campaign now, they still have to deal with the Watcher in the mess. Okay. I think we'll, we're going to use this uh, Deadly Visit. Although I could Veiled Shade, couldn't I? This is a reasonable chance they have Whisper Agent here. I think we're going to go with the Veiled Shade. Wall of Mist is preventing damage, but Veiled Shade is a bigger threat. And if they have counter, I don't know if it matters either way. I think regardless of what I played, they would have countered. Ooh. 
the campaign here would be pretty painful. Okay. Centipede is not as reasonable as I would like, but... Well, actually, I guess we actually deadly visit the wi the Wall of Mist, don't we? Because then at least everything trades with the Centipede. If I kill the Centipede, they have a good blocker. So let's do this. Snitch and Swamp. So let's... Uh, Let's ditch the the snitch, keep the swamp. This at least makes our Lotlet Giant have some impact if we eventually get to it. We'll attack here. Okay, so Giant now can make our opponent lose a couple life. Interesting. Okay. Playing the land because we are still shy of what we need for this giant. Okay. Muse Drake, actually a pretty good draw. I guess we can pre-combat that. Dead weight, nice. Okay, well, let's get in there for now. All right, definitely sandbagging the dead weight. They have the disinformation campaign. It's nice to have that so we can still... Uh, at this point, they're straight up dead to a lot less giant. Very big deal. Very big deal. Oh. That's convenient. Oh, that was unexpected. Multiple counter spells is actually pretty scary. Okay, well, I guess the good news is they have to deal with two flyers. And even if they do, we're a land away from just killing them with a resolved Lotla Giant. That was a surprising win. I'm happy to get that. Uh, so they're bringing in all the counter spells. I'd really like to just... It really feels like our way, our path to victory is cheap beaters. It could be ditching the dazzling lights is a good idea. Once again, we lose out on some surveil value, but to me, it makes more sense to be resolving creatures. They don't, they don't have a ton of creatures. They have a lot of card advantage. We need to lower our curve as much as we can. I think this is good with me. Well, the snitches get a lot worse without uh, a good amount of surveil, which we are definitely lacking now. We essentially have, what, three surveil cards? We have the, the sabotage and two deadly... Oh, and the, the watcher. Four is still pretty bad. We could swap out dead weight for dazzling lights. It just it, it ups our surveil a little bit, and dead weight... Either one is... Not a terribly exciting option. At least with Surveil, we can find 
better gas options. It probably makes more sense than dead weight. I'm not sure actually, but I think this is how we'll run it. And once again, they probably want us to be on the play. We'll see. We chose to be on the play, and it did work out for us. And once again, they don't uh, want to play first. Well, we're definitely keeping this. Not a great hand, but a hand that I don't feel great about mulliganing either. We may need to Dazzling Lights here. I, I feel as though we can't afford to lose out on land drops in a match like this. So I think we will. Okay. Hmm. Tough to not keep those. The good news is a resolved, well, there's good news and bad news. The good news is a resolved Night Vale Predator has got to be a big deal. The bad news is a disinformation campaign, as per usual, is a pretty big de uh, deal here. Well, if they had it, they would have played it. So it might be Whisper Agent, in which case I'm fine making the trade. Okay, well, we're going to try and resolve this Veiled Shade. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a big turn to resolve that predator. Really huge there. Just an absolute necessity. Oops. Let's tap our mana correctly. We need a blue, a blue, a black, and a black. Okay. That was huge. Really, really big for us there. Very difficult to deal with. They're going to need a flyer. They do have Watcher in the Mist, but we have removal, so we can at least attempt to be patient here. So if they slam that, at least we've got something we can do. We've, we've got some gas to look for. Okay. Okay. All right, would have liked the untapped land, but that's okay. Let's uh, let's get in with that predator. We play the guild gate. Well, we play the Drake first. We're, we are going to play the guild gate, but we play the Drake first. Okay, good. So next turn we even have Vigor Spore Worm, which is a huge deal. It's, well, hmm, we probably play the, so if they leave up, uh, they're leaving up the counter spell, which to me, well, we're probably taking, no, I guess we don't take it, do we? Okay, so, yeah, all right, they're leaving up Devious Cover-Up, so, we can afford to play around it pretty easily because they're the ones that need to really do something here.
No need to play something yet. Okay. All right. Two cards left. We're going to still play around the counter spell. Oh, perfect. Oh, they didn't have it. Well, that's good. That tells me that we can win next turn on the back of a Vigor Spore Worm. All right. Pretty fortunate to get the victory there, quite frankly. I believe we had some mulligans. Our opponent had a very, very good uh, Demir deck, especially in the Mirror Match. Disinformation campaign is such uh, such a big game breaker. We're very fortunate they didn't see it in games two or three. Uh, they had more card advantage than we did, so really happy to get a victory here. This was a uh, challenging match if you ran it through a cycle ten times, I think. Um, all right. We'll see you in round two. Round two, we're going to keep this hand. It's not great, but we have some high-end cards. We can play a couple cards here. We get to surveil. It's probably worth it. We're also on the draw. I don't think we're in any rush to play that barrier, especially given that we have a snitch in hand. So we'll be patient here. Another Demir deck. Okay. Uh-oh. Well, we're going to slam dunk that snitch now. Adept, too. I guess if they have removal, I'd probably still rather them kill the snitch. Adept is just such a deal breaker in the late game. Okay. Well, I guess we get in with the snitch. Play an adept. And uh, I suppose we can play the barrier of bones too. Do a little surveilling. Get rid of any lands we don't need. Okay. Giant. All right. Well, let's get in with the snitch here. Okay, so I guess we'll be Dazzling Lights, the uh, Child of Night. Let's 
get some surveil going here. So we can ditch the land and deadly visit seems good. All right, so we'll kill the watcher and we'll leave the snitch back for blocking purposes. And continue to do some digging here. All right. Don't need the forest, although it does move us towards Lala the Giant. We will keep the shade. And pass. Shade is definitely looking good here. All right. Gargoyle is a 4-4. So... Let's go land shade. So we've got a mana sink in the shade. And we can play the giant if need be. If we draw land. Okay, so another big flyer there. Bigger spore worm, that's a good one. It's a big deal. So, why don't we just drop the worm and uh, just pump the shade and attack with that. Could actually do the snitch in case they want to trade. More potential damage with the shade, but the shade can pump. I think we do snatch. We don't have any surveil left, so this seems fine. One less damage, but they may want to trade. I'm not sure. They don't, which is okay too, because Vigor Spore Worm is kind of a must deal with card. And if it is dealt with, we have the Lotla Giant potential here still. But they've got us on a, in three turns here, so we are in a bit of a rush. Could have attacked with the Shade as well, but no, that doesn't make sense. I think that's an easy, easy Child of Night trade for them. This definitely strikes me as a, uh, we want to be on the draw style match here. All right, so we'll just block the child there and take eight. Multiple artful takedowns, good to know. So we'll get in here and drop the giant. Not playing around uh, disdainful stroke. Don't really have the luxury there. Although I guess I could have pre-combated. I'm not sure it really matters since we can't uh, currently do much about the, the big fat flyers. So the, the main issue now is even if we can kill one of the flyers, the other one is still lethal. Okay. Um, all right. Um, we're going to let the, the thing die. I'm going to try and scare them 
and make them think I have something. It's my only shot of winning here. Okay. So we'll take our medicine and we'll go to game two. We want to be on the draw. No disinformation campaign this time. We can do the never happens. Yeah, I don't mind that actually. And then we probably once again ditch something like radical idea, which is card advantage, but we probably don't need it. And then maybe the maybe the barrier. Whoops. Oh, okay. And then we just bring in some hand disruption. Probably not a terrible idea. Okay. Yeah. We'll do this. We'll be on the draw. Not a great hand, but we will keep it. Opponent mulls to six. All right, good draw there. Okay. All right. Wish I could do something about that, actually, since they're off blue mana. I think we'll just drop a uh, Dark Blade Agent here. Because we have the Dazzling Lights, and we can play a Shade or a Centipede. Probably the Shade. It's a little bigger threat when you have the mana up. Ah, Lazav, huh? It's a good one. So, we're going to attack. And, uh, yeah, I guess we don't... With that draw, we don't necessarily even have to play the Dazzling Lights yet. Um... I mean, I can play Dazzling Lights, I can Surveil, I can draw. All those are really good. I think we're just going to get in, though, and then play Amuse Drake. We still get to draw a card. We don't put as much damage on the table, but I like it. I like it. I think it makes sense. So, I think we just get in, and our plan is to play Veiled Shade plus Child of Night. Alright, I'm not going to play the Dazzling Lights because they have Artful Takedown mana up. So we'll just play a Veiled Shade. And a Child of Night. So, I assume they're going to probably play Artful. No, no Artful Takedown play. Okay. It's a bit surprising. Okay, Wall of Mist. Not super intimidated by that. So now they don't even have... Yeah, they don't even have... Bounce Mana up here. But that's all right. We'll just get in here. They don't have Artful Takedown mana. So 
I can just pump three times to kill Wall of Mist. Or I can kill Lazav with a Dazzling Light. Um... They could have the... I think we'll just kill Lazav. Well, we can keep both of those. So let's do that. Let's uh, get the never happen first, kind of see what we're going to have to deal with. Okay, Predator. So, let's, uh, I guess we attack first here. Um, so we can pump one two times and then we can never happened so let's see what we're let's see what we've got we've got counter spell artful takedown maximize altitude so uh, we probably do the takedown Yeah, that makes sense to me. That can actually kill our Veiled Shade, whereas Counterspell, we're not extremely concerned about, considering they need both their blue mana up to play it, and they pretty, they definitely want to play a Wall of Mist here. Yeah. So now they can't do the Sabotage, which means we probably just... Deadly visit. And swing with everything, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. And we can even attack with the Veiled Shade too, which is nice. Okay, those are very good. Let's uh, keep both. Get the Sabotage next turn. More valuable to us. Um, let's say I swing with the team, what happens, and they block my Child of Night and my Veiled Shade. They take six. That's quite it. That might be worth losing the Child of Night over. Especially since we, we draw. I think it's worth it. They could block the Muse Drake, too, I suppose. But we want to get some damage in. I think they, that's actually unexpected blocks that I like. What am I drawing again? Now I forgot already. Sinister Sabotage. I can't play it anyway because of the way that I tap my mana. So let's just pump and get the extra damage through. We're going to draw. We play the land and pass. I could have sandbagged that in case they draw something that makes us discard. But that's all right. Child of Night, all right. Poisoner, that's right. So, we get in with these two. So let's see here, seven, eight mana, 
I need three for this. I need to pump three times. That's six. So I won't be able to leave up Sabotage, but we'll get rid of the Wall of Mist. Hmm. I think it's worth our time. This is a little bit risky, but... I guess another issue is we can't play the Poisoner now either, can we? Hmm. So be it. Uh, the good thing is our Child of Night can attack into the Predator. That is actually a pretty big deal. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, not the draw we wanted. Okay, well, we can get in with the shade. They do have to block here. Yeah. I mean, this is a good trade for us. Obviously, not ideal for us, but... But we do get to play the Poisoner and leave up Sinister Sabotage. Those are all good things. All of our guys can... Well, can all of our guys attack into the Night Vale Predator? I guess our agent can't. Okay. So we play the snitch. And if they sabotage it, I actually don't even think that's a big deal. In fact, if they sabotage it, do I sabotage back? That was the question there. And I think the answer is yes. Because then our guy gets death touch too. And... That would have been too big for them to deal with. They might do like an artful takedown here, in which case we absolutely sinister sabotage, and they're in big trouble. Yeah, they are in huge trouble now. That was huge. They can't counter back. We ditch this. Our guy has death touch. They're drained. They have to block. That was just a huge, huge sinister sabotage. Yeah, I mean, that was absolutely the game right there. Um, Okay. Their deck is sweet, too. The funny thing is we beat a Demir deck round one with arguably a better deck than us. And now I feel like our opponent here has at least comparable, maybe better than what we've got too, and we won. So that's a good sign. I don't think we're going to do the beatdown plan with this deck though. We're not as much in a rush as we were in round one because of the uh, disinformation campaign. Well, we're going to keep this. Not in love with this hand, but we're on the draw, which is where we want to be. And uh, ideally, we draw well here. Yeah, that'll do. Don't need the green mana just yet. And it's probably wiser to get the Demir one down in case we rip a Night Veil Predator. I think. Pass Wall Adept is a good draw. So let's get our Child of Night down. Much better with the Pass Wall Adept. Okay. Yeah, 
guess we attack with the child and uh, play the adept. We really don't care what dies exactly because whatever is dying is going to make these bigger swear worms better later. I guess I would prefer my snitch to die than the adept, but I also want them to be burning their artful takedowns now before my bigger spore worms come down. Okay, they do have the predator. It's going to be a, a problem. But we can start getting in with the, the child at least. No need to play the snitches right now, so let's just get in with the child here. And I'm going to have to be conscious of doing this after attacks because of Artful Takedown. Don't want to prepay that mana. They're tapped out now, so it doesn't matter, but I need to be cognizant of that if they're leaving the mana up. If they're leaving the mana up, I may not even do it. Although, I probably do, actually. Okay. I think we sacked the uh, Child of Night. So we're going to, I think we play two snitches. The reason is I want to be able to double block the play crafter. We kind of need to be in damage prevention mode here a little bit because we're going to have to hope that these two vigor spore worms are good enough. They certainly can be, but we got to get to them first. We're definitely double blocking the play crafter, and if they play the artful takedown, we're actually in okay shape. because we don't have to worry about it being played on our bigger spore worm. Um, we get multiple creatures in the graveyard, so our attacks are better, and consecutive resolve bigger spore worms to me is a pretty big deal. Okay. All right, so thankfully we can uh, resolve our worm here and um, get in with our snitch at least. Okay. I still feel like I probably double block the Plague Crafter. Our Vigor Spore Worm is at least getting better the more creatures that die. Okay. One card left. That's good news for us, actually. So let's play our worm. I guess we can even... Yeah, we can play the land, too. All right. So we play the worm. We get in for four this time. And we have the dazzling lights to drain, which... Doesn't actually change the clock, but does let us potentially put even more creatures in the yard. 
think we actually dazzling lights here because it drains, they don't gain life. Well, hmm. Does it change the clock? They go from 15 to 17, 6, 12, 18. It doesn't change the clock, does it? I guess because of that, I guess I don't. I'd probably rather do it on the receiving end. I guess it maybe a hmm. Yeah. I'm not a hundred percent on that. Oh, well, that actually helps. That helps make the decision easier here. So we'll take it. And we play another Vigor Sport Worm. And then we Dazzling Lights after blocks. Yeah, okay. Well, that helps too. But we're going to do the Worm right now. They don't have lethal on the backswing, do they? No, they don't. Okay. Okay. So we go the worm. We, oops. Green. And we attack. They may not even block here. which might work out okay for us. Them blocking actually helps quite a bit too though. So we can Dazzling Lights. Sorry, that doesn't die. I suppose we keep the Deadly Visit. Or some Surveil Value. Chamber Sentry. Hmm. Okay. It's okay with me. That's actually an interesting one. It's okay. Okay, by me. So, we kill the, uh, we actually, we kill the Watcher. And then we can even attack with the Snitch, too, which is quite nice. We can keep both of these. Really good, actually. Um, we swing, they have to block a, a Worm, so we attack with everything. Really happy to see these worms pulling as much weight as they are. They, this is precisely why we splash for them. They really have just absolutely been instrumental in this game. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable how good the Bigger Sport Worms panned out there. Really happy with that. All right. We'll see you in round three. Round three, we're going to be on the play in game one. Um, hmm. Tan definitely needs some help. It's very good if we draw a black mana, though. I think we're going to risk it. We get at least two turns to draw a black mana. We have eight sources in the deck, I believe, which is not a ton. I do think this hand gets really good with a black mana, though. We can drop Snitch into Snitch into... That's actually a pretty reasonable draw. Let's go Adept first, though. But if we miss a land draw next turn, at least we've got 
radical idea. In fact, it might have even been a better idea to do the radical idea now in case we have to discard. Or in case we don't draw the land, I mean. So then at least the follow-up turn, we could do it again and discard to help hit that land draw. But that, that's not a, it's not a huge deal. We may be a turn behind on land draws. But it's nice to see Radical Idea doing something, I'll say that. Oh, very good. Very, very good. Okay. Perfect, actually. So now we can get in. We can pass. We can end of turn, end of their turn, play the Radical Idea. And uh, start getting busy here. I'm not sure how I feel about a Golgari matchup yet. They typically want to put creatures in their graveyard, so we're going to hopefully try and avoid that till we have to. Okay. Oh, very nice. So now we can go Muse Drake. We get an evasive creature, and uh, we draw a card. So progressing nicely here. Looking to set up for some snitches to give our opponent some stitches. Now we're in a position where it's next turn, attack with the Drake, plus snitch, snitch, barrier of bones. Very good. They attack here, we block with the Drake. Not worth double blocking. No attacks, no plays. Also interesting. Vigor's Four Worm, very good. So, let's do this. Let's get in with the Drake. And we go Snitch, Snitch, Barrier. Very nice. Uh, let's just play the Vigor Spore Worm, so... Yeah, it seems fine to me, actually. We can resolve an unanswered Vigor Spore Worm. My opponent is presumably in pretty big trouble. Yeah, we can make it unblockable with our Adept, so that's not even really a concern. Let's get in with the Drake and play a Worm. And they need to kill it. There's quite a few ways for them to, uh, to deal with the Worm here, quite frankly, but... That's okay. If they have it, we'll accept that. If they don't, they're taking a lot of damage. Um, Here I may want to actually double block. I don't need my snitches anymore, and this to me seems like a pretty... Reasonable two for one. Given that we've also got a lot of giant and another Vigor Spore Worm here. That was a good draw. Unfortunately, right after we lost the snitches, but honestly, it doesn't even matter. Um... I think we just play a child and get in with the worm and the and the drake.
And I mean, if they're going to tie up their turn using Glaive of the Guild Pact on Iron Shell Beetle, they're in pretty big trouble. I mean, that makes sense. Kind of have to do that. The good news for us is we kill Beetle now. We get in for four, and they are pretty close to dead here. And they've got to deal with a lot of stuff. Ditch the lands. Get in there. And drop the poisoner. Looks like they're dead. Oh, no, they're still dead, aren't they? Well, I guess not. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. Um, let's just uh, get a little unblockable here. So this takes them to one. And once again, this is really where Passwall Adept, I think, shines tremendously. Yeah. Okay. Chemister's Insight on the splash, too. It's a interesting choice, but I guess if you have the, yeah, if you got the gates to support it, why not? It's good card advantage. Ah, uh, so we're playing Never Happen might actually be a pretty good choice here. Again, we've been sideboarding into this a lot, admittedly. But Radical Idea is just such an easy card to cut. And never happened, particularly against a Golgari deck, seems important to me. Exile is huge, and getting rid of the, the late game fat is kind of a big deal. Problem is, the Glaive is very good. I would say it's at its best in uh, Golgari. We may not need double never happens match, maybe just the one, unless, well... Do I want to, once again, maybe ditch Barrier of Bones? Yeah, okay. Okay. We'll do this. The Never Happened have been playing reasonably well for us, so let's stick to that. Let's see if they want to be on the player draw. They want to be on the play, which I think is good news for us, I think. Don't necessarily have to quote me on that, but we'll find out. Child into Never Happened seems okay to me. Well, into Centipede is also good. All right. Uh-oh. Hmm. So we can never happened, or we can centipede. We probably centipede. We have removal for days, so makes sense to me to get the threat down. Fine broker. That's a pretty good one, actually, with the, the dead weight. So, we're going to never happen now. Let's see what we're exiling here. Generous stray, dead weight, circuitous round. I guess it's in our best interest to probably. Huh. That's actually interesting, isn't it?
The dead weight is gonna get our centipede pretty good, and I feel like we kind of need the centipede right now, so we probably get rid of the dead weight. This does leave them with a stray, but I think it's in our best interest. The circuitous route is pretty harsh, too. Double Deadly Visit is, is pretty good for us, though. That's not bad, either. All right. Well, let's pay this fine broker a visit here. Use Drake and Dark Blade Agent. Well, both of those seem fine to me. Or do we want to ditch them both to build towards this Lotleth Giant? Seems a bit ambitious, doesn't it? But I mean, next turn we're playing Deadly Visit. And it's definitely in our best interest to... I mean, these... The problem with keeping these is they're... A little bit slow. It may be in our best interest to just... I don't know. What are we digging for? Night Veil Predator, Figure Spore Worms. Okay. I think we're ditching these. I know it's crazy. It is crazy. But I feel like with the four creatures in yard and this Lotlet Giant and the cat we're going to kill next turn because they're just going to slam it and equip it, this could work better for us. Them drawing a land is not really a big deal either. Okay, so kill this. Oh, that one's nice. Could have kept the land for the giant, actually, but that's okay. Uh-oh. So, problem is they're going to go circuitous route equip, and we're taking probably nine or something crazy like that. Um, can I afford to take ten? Uh, how much are we dealing back? One, two, wait, one two, three creatures in the yard, so that's eight, five, not enough. Hmm. Um, I think we probably block with the predator here. Oh, they should have I'm really happy they didn't pre-combat that. That was that's very significant that they didn't. Maybe they were just hoping they drew something, I guess. Well, that's nice. It's actually really nice. Wow. Okay, so we go informant and probably just ditch a bunch of creatures. Dazzling lights is huge, too. We can't draw it though. So we have five creatures in the yard. 
the issue now is if they have removal, if I attack with the centipede and they have removal, they kill us. If they don't and they attack us, if they do and they attack us, a bunch of things die. But Lot Left Giant's not going to kill them. So this is more challenging than it looks. I think that we just play the shade and pass. I don't feel like dying to a deadly visit is a good idea. So we'll block with the uh, informant and the centipede. Hmm. Well, do we have lethal with our giant yet? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One shy. Oh no. Well, okay. All right, get rid of the Gorgon. Hmm. Lazav too. Wow. We are one shy on this uh, uh, lot less giant. So, essentially, we have to. I, well, I think they can get us with that Lazav. We need them to do something, and we need them to do something. Okay, it, I, I guess it doesn't matter because they can just transform this now. Really close, though. If we could resolve, I mean, the funny thing is, we don't even have the mana for the giant yet, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we'll go to game three. I think I... Hmm. Is our late game better than our opponent's? Once again, kind of boils down to that. Because if it's not, then I want to play first. But if it is, I want to play second. The Glaive is huge. The Glaive is very good. They didn't show us any fatties. It, it almost makes me want to just play Mesmeris and like ditch Dazzling Lights and stuff and maybe get off the Never Happened plan or maybe keep the Never Happened plan but go more for a, a beatdown plan again. Like ditch Dazzling Lights, put more pressure on them. Because the thing about Glaive is it's clunky. It's game winning but it's clunky. Like maybe we can ditch the informant and go a bit more of an attack route they have a lot of x2s but lazav is such a good answer for our mesmeris and the wild ceratox but i feel like we want to be on the play only because the glaive is so good. Okay. We're going to try and 
attack in, I think is the plan. I'm not in love with this hand. I feel like we might still keep it, though. Hmm. We're going to risk it. Not a bad draw, actually. A pretty good one. It's actually nice. Mesmeris is quite good against the Poisoner. Okay. That was a great draw. Now we're in uh, Night Vale Predator territory, which is huge. Midnight Reaper is very good, too. Could kill the Reaper now. They get to draw off of it. I think we're I think we're going Predator though. Let's get the Predator right now. So we we're gonna have to take a oops. We're gonna have to take a hit here. Um but I'm gonna hope this deadly visit does some work for us. Okay. So we go visit on the Midnight Reaper. Hopefully find a green mana, I guess. Snitch. Hmm. Snitch in a swamp. I think we ditch both. We're digging for something more important here. We don't have any more surveil. We don't have a ton of surveil in the deck in general. We can probably block the hired poisoner now too, since Vigor Spore Worm gets better. Or we can hold out for well, no, I think we just block the poisoner. Their deck is better with little creatures than ours is, so this is fine. All right. Okay. Um. Well, we're getting in with the predator. And we'll play the drake. And if we can draw another land untapped, we can do the child of night. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Two 
two, three, four. All right, we'll take it. All right, we'll get her a price of fame and burglar rat. And for four, well, could rip a forest, I guess. If we do, we get to kill him with bigger spore worm, but if we don't, we're in a bit of trouble. Three lethal creatures now. Yeah. Okay. Well, forest would get us there. If not, I think that we are dead. Well, a creature would do it too. Well, dead weight does actually help. I think the problem is hmm because what's in their graveyard they have they have a uh Midnight Reaper. So, hmm. yeah, guess we killed a, well, guess we killed a Death Touch. So we block like this, I think. Because at least now Vigor's War Worm could possibly um, do something about the Okapi. Oh, it was a big payoff on that insight on the splash. All right. Did not get there, but it was a close match, actually. I'm very happy with how well our deck did in general. I think our deck did really well. This is the only time Bigger Spore Worm was ever uh, unable to be cast. I loved what our deck did. I We beat two better Demir decks. So... That I would say we had a lot of great fortune there. Um, this this deck had some absolute shortcomings and was able to go 2-1. So I'm very happy with the result. Hope you enjoyed the draft. We'll see you for the next one.